All right, we'll continue our availabilities with uh, the most recent NASCAR Xfinity Series uh, winner, uh, one at Darlington, driver of the number one, one main financial Chevrolet for Junior Motorsports. Uh, Elliot, you are the only driver to clinch a chase spot in both the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and NASCAR Xfinity Series, so you know this place as the chase caught up very well. Plus, growing up an hour away from here, this is a special place for you. What are you looking for? coming into this weekend well it's it's a special weekend uh guys especially for all the fans here in this area i think we we understand how blessed we are to have the final weekend of the chase especially for the cup guys uh getting in it brings a lot of hype to to this part of uh of the country and we're all race fans here especially in, in the southern part of virginia so it's special for me not only as a driver but also a, a fan coming off a big weekend at, at darlington uh my phone is rang off the hook um this week as far as getting passes and getting tickets i just went to the ticket office and and purchased 50 tickets for tonight's race so uh a lot of, it's cool when a lot of people come and, and want to support you and we got a lot of momentum on our side right now and i can't think of a better place to be than, than right here in richmond and it's and it's definitely um an honor to to be somebody that has been a part of the cup trade cup chase its first year and now part of the xfinity chase its first year not everybody can say that so that's uh, that's pretty neat to be a part of that All right Nobody can say that, only you. Um, who's got questions for Elliot? We'll start over here with uh, Jim. Jim Hunter, motorsport.com. Welcome to the Media Center, by the uh, way. Thank you. <laughs> um, how is your uh, having run for championships in uh, Cup and Xfinity, how is you think your team's approach changing now uh, with you guys got two wins and is it changing? How is it different than in past se the past recent seasons where you've run for the championship? That's a good question, Jim. It's uh, and thanks for having me again in the media center. It's it's cool to see you guys every once in a while. And uh, as far as prepping for the chase, um, I feel like I can bring the mental part of it from a driver standpoint. Being a part of it in, in the Cup Series, I understand how it's all going to get ramped up and emotions are going to get high because it's it's kind of life or death here as here as we move forward. But I tell you, the, I think the biggest thing that will help me is my crew chief. He's been a part of it with Dale Jr. the last couple of years in the Cup Series. He understands what's going to come, um, come towards us from a, a car preparation point. Um, we, we started preparing for the chase around the end of July. And we saw a little bit of the effects of that last weekend at Darlington on getting our cars lined up, testing some things. We understand what we're going to run at each track coming up. We feel very prepared about um, uh, our position going into the chase. We, we don't think we're going to get outrun in the chase. We're definitely going to be fast enough. It's just going to be keeping ourselves in good situations and not kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. Kevin has done a tremendous job not only while we're, we've been racing at the track, but also stockpiling all the data, all the notes, all the cars, all the parts, everything we need to when Kentucky gets here, um, we're going to be very prepared. And Darlington, we treated, Darlington last week to us was treated like a chase race. The car that we brought, the mentality that we had, the way we went through things was this was kind of a practice run for us. So to run like we did at Darlington right off the truck and the way we competed in the race gives us some good confidence uh, as we head down to Kentucky in a couple weeks. Go Tom, Bob, and then in the back to Sean and, and Mark. Hi, Elliot. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Congratulations on your Darlington win. Two questions. Number one, where does Darlington rank in the races you've won in your, in your career? And number two, how much is the high heat here going to play a factor in tonight's race? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely hot here today. Th you know, Thankfully, I'm from Virginia, so used to this humidity. And uh, so I don't think the heat's going to be too bad for a night race. As far as the Darlington win... Guys, I've been trying to win that race for a long time. I've had a chance to win a cup race there or two and thrown it away. I've had a chance to win the Xfinity race there a couple of times. And I got wrecked on the last lap in 2012 and should have won. I got passed by Chase Elliott on the last lap two years ago. I got a lot of top fives and stuff there the last couple of years. So we've been there in position. So honestly, it's Tom, it's pretty high on the list and I, for, for a few different reasons. All the stuff that's going on with my owner, Dale, the last couple of weeks, to get that phone call from him and to get another phone call from him again this week to, to talk about different things makes it very special. To hold somebody off like Denny Hamlin, whose his record speaks for itself at Darlington, how, how good he's been there. So uh, 
pretty special weekend for me. And my wife and kids are there with me, man. Any, anytime you can't buy a ticket to that show, man, you got to earn your, your, your family in victory lane. So it's, it's neat to be able to share that emotion with them. So very, definitely very high on the list. Um. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. How do you think the Xfinity Chase will be different than the Cup Chase? You start with a standalone event, and then you kind of have a couple week break there in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, we, we get a chance to cool off, Bob. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad or, or, or not. I think um, you know. I, I think the first the first session is going to be smooth. I think it's going to be that second session when you got to go from eight to four before Homestead. It's going to get pretty tricky. Um, you know, we don't know. The cool thing about the chase is, you know, you and I can handicap it right now, just like we can handicap the cup race. But we've seen in the years past with late restarts and, um, you know, pit calls and track position and penalties and speeding on pit road and all these things thrown into it. It, it just ramps up the excitement and, and probably the unknowns that's, that's going to come with the chase. So, I mean, I can handicap it right now and tell you who I think we're going to have to beat when we get to Homestead. But you just never know when you race what's going to happen, Bob. So I don't, I don't know. But we as a team are happy for the two-week break because of, of what we're going to try to do with our cars. Uh, so we, we're kind of happy the two-week break is in there to, to make sure we're, we're prepared as best we can going into that final little stretch. Mark? Mark Davis, NBC 12 in Richmond. Elliot, you've talked about uh, trying to get a win here, having not won here. Yeah, I know we, it's kind of a consistent question wherever you come here, but a big time with your consistency and how well you've been doing to, to get your first win here. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to win here, guys. I mean, this is home to me. I uh, I know you've heard me tell this story before, but, you know, we, we came here when it, you know, remember the race that used to be in March? Anybody been here when it was used to be in March? It was the third race of the year, and it was like 16 degrees on the front stretch. You know, I was here for all those races. So it's neat to come back years later, and, and, come, and I'm on the other side of the fence. Uh, it was neat to be here as a fan watching Richard Petty uh, drive the bulldozer on the, on the track to start tearing down the wall when they made it from a half mile to a three-quarter mile. So it's I was a fan first, and my family and friends and uh, my my next door neighbors still have the top uh, the top row at the start finish line twenty tickets long. They still here come to every race, so it's neat that it's so much family and friends involved to come here to Richmond uh, to 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 support us uh, race. So um, I got half my. Um, kids class is coming tonight to support us tonight uh half the first grade his first grade class and friends are coming because kids 12 and under get in free so it was a cool concept so a lot of kids and stuff are coming to watch so it's just neat for us to be able to be here and yes we want to win this race and nobody's going to give it to us we have to go earn it and you know hopefully we'll be able to make something happen here tonight it's it would definitely be special um especially if you could put two two in a row together coming off such a great historic uh, racetrack like darlington but you know we're going to do our best but honestly um nobody's put any extra pressure on me it's it's all self-inflicted and man we, i gotta go out there and do a good job i mean that's all that's all it's gonna take sean Elliot sean robertson cbs affiliate in town congratulations again on the win at Thank darlington you. i got a two-part question for you. you mentioned about you know having everybody here for the race tonight how do you balance trying to deflect the outside distractions to focus on winning your first race here and the second part when you were talking about Darlington and preparing that as a uh, chase race for you what is your mental approach for this race tonight already being in the chase yeah well we can take chances if you're already in the chase and I've usually done pretty good at balancing uh, you know here at Richmond between family and friends coming you know, my, my wife does a good job of helping me balance that as well with all the kids and stuff we have coming here tonight. So I'm not worried about that part of it. Um, as far as racing here tonight, balancing for the chase and coming off what we learned last week, we're not treating Richmond the same as what we, we did Darlington last week. We might be trying a few things, but it doesn't have that same feel to it. We came here tonight. Just to have some fun. We're going to take some chances. Whatever the race throws at us, we're going to try to make the most of it and hopefully have a good finish before the day's over with. Chris. Chris Knightcatchfans.com. Hi, Elliot. How are you? Um, what do you think we can expect at Kentucky Speedway? It's the first race for the chase. The track is still relatively going through the asphalt, you know, new asphalt, and 
It's going to be a standalone race. Do you think that opens a sense of unpredictableness for the opening round of the chase? And do you feel like that that you can have a mulligan if you have a bad race at Kentucky and still make it through the next round? Yeah, I think some of us are looking at that as a good place to try to win, you know, because it is a standalone event. Um, it is a second race back in Kentucky, so it might be a little bit different, but, it, but it's a night race. It, it'll have plenty of grip and stuff in it. But I think a lot of us are looking at – um, you know, just by being a fan and watching the Sprint Cup guys the last couple of years, it seemed like whoever can win the the first race of a round seems to be more relaxed and can try some things and kind of start preparing for the next round. So I think that's the way we're looking at it, Chris. If you can go to Kentucky and win that race, you can kind of bag off there for the for the rest of that round and start looking at the next the next round and start focusing on things for that. If you have a really good car that you really like, you might can pull it out of one rotation and add it in somewhere else. So I think a lot of us are looking at Kentucky to maybe make that happen. Got a follow up here uh, from Mark. Right behind you. I'll fire one more at you, Elliot. You, okay. you, you had referenced uh, Dale Jr. and you know I just his, his situation earlier with him being out for the rest of the season. Can you just discuss how much stronger NASCAR is when he's behind the wheel, when he's on the track, and you know for the sport as a whole, how good it is to. to it will be to have him back next season. Well, it'll definitely be good to have him back next year. And, and I'll be honest with you guys, the way he's handled it, uh, he's handled it like a pro. I, I'm not sure all of us in the sport can handle it as good as he has. Uh, he's been very open about it, you know, sharing it with, you know, family and friends and, and race fans and, and things like that. And I, I think that's been pretty neat. He's definitely, uh, you know, frustrated not being in a race car. He's a race car driver. That's what he wants to do. But uh, I applaud him on how he's looking at this for, for later on down in life. And he wants to be 100% when he gets to the Daytona 500 in, in 2017. I mean, my discussion with him this week was as a fellow race car driver. And I mean, okay, Dale, we're going to Richmond this weekend. You won this race in the spring. Anything you saw on the track that maybe I need to look at? You know, what's your car doing practice compared to the race? Uh, you know, I've been looking at videotapes of Homestead and Kansas and Texas and these tracks. And what do you see? This is what I see. What is your mindset? So I, I leaned on him this weekend as a mentor. I mean, this week. It was not about what he was going through more as, all right, boss, man, we're in a pretty good shape right here. And we, we learned some stuff at Darlington. This is what I'm looking at these tracks. What do you think? So that's kind of the conversation we had this week. And it's pretty cool to be able to lean on him. Uh, for, for information like that as well. Any other questions for Elliot? All right, that'd be good. All right, thanks, thanks guys. So Have a good weekend.